name's Alex and I've been weaving with Willow for about 10 months now. And though that is a very short amount of time to be doing a craft, I have learned so much and I get a lot of questions on my short form social media accounts like where I get the willow, how I prepare it, where I learned. And so I thought it'd be nice to have one video going over all of those questions and essentially brain dumping everything that I've learned in the last 10 months so that other people that want to get into weaving with willow can have this resource that I kind of wish that I had when I first started. I think the beginner's perspective can be really helpful when you're learning a new skill because Someone that's more advanced may assume foundational knowledge, whereas a beginner will share all of those kind of basic tips. I also think this video will be fun to look back on in years time when I've learned so much more. In the information bar down below, I'll share a link to my blog post where I will share as many links as possible to everything that I'm talking about here. This video will be focusing on weaving with willow because that's my preferred material to weave with. But I encourage you, if you don't have Willow available to you, to find out what is available to you locally and learning to weave with that. I will share more information on that in the video. All right, so I wanna start off by talking about where I get my willow. This is by far my most asked question and the one that's most difficult to answer because it is so place specific. I'm really lucky I have two local growers that are growing willow near me where I can purchase dried willow from and they're growing European varieties of willow that have been grown and cultivated for hundreds and hundreds of years because they're so good for weaving with. Now, if I were looking to source willow local to me, I would start with guilds, weaving guilds, basketry guilds. Joining a guild is gonna get you on a listserv, it's gonna connect you with other weavers in your area and potentially growers too. I would also look into or take an in-person class because they're gonna be supplying you with willow for your class. Um, and that would be a great place to connect with a grower. I would also join Facebook groups, um, basketry Facebook groups to connect with local growers and find out where people are getting their willow. You can order willow online, but I would not recommend shipping it internationally. I hear it can be a total nightmare shipping willow across borders. You need permits, the willow might need to be sprayed, et cetera, et cetera. But I can almost guarantee that there is somebody in your country selling willow online that can be shipped within your country. People also often ask me about harvesting wild willow, which I don't have a ton of experience with, but again, Facebook groups like Wild Basketry Facebook groups would be a great place to get information. Again, it is so place specific. Um, it depends on what species are growing in your area and if they're good for basketry. Um, and then you'll get information on those of like when to harvest and how to harvest it. I store all my willow in my duck coop behind me here. You might be able to hear my ducks quacking in the background. Um, it's a pretty good space. It's not ideal because it's not closed in, but it is covered so it does keep my willow dry. But I think ideally I would have a heat source in there to keep it really dry. So the next topic that I want to cover is willow preparation. This is so key with weaving because having like pliable willow that doesn't crack is super essential for a nice basket. This took me a long time to grasp because it is a lot of trial and error. It's very climate specific, temperature specific. And then also like, depending on how thick your willow is, it's gonna take longer to soak than if it's thinner. So a lot of trial and error here. I started by soaking my willow in a pond near my house, but that pond dried up in the summer. And so my partner was able to get some off cut two by tens that were spruce from his work and we made a frame and put a pond liner in the frame and I had a willow soaker. I find that in the summer, the willow takes about one week to soak because the water's a bit warmer, but in the winter, it takes like two to three weeks even if the willow's really thick. After the willow's done soaking, I have been steaming my willow. So I take a wallpaper steamer 
and I wrap the willow in poly and steam it for about 20 to 30 minutes. I find this makes it just extra flexible. It also creates like this nice chocolatey brown color, but you don't have to do that. What you do do when you take your willow out is you lean it up against a wall, under cover, and let it sit for kind of 12 to 24 hours to let it mellow. I find that willow typically lasts like three to four days before it dries out. And I've read in a lot of places that you can't re-soak willow that have been like dried, soaked, and then dried again. But I've done that before. It's definitely not ideal because the bark will sometimes peel off, but you can do it. And it was great for me when I was learning to weave and learning to soak willow too. To check if your willow's ready, you can take one of the sticks, bend it 90 degrees towards the base. And if it cracks, it's not ready, but if it bends nicely, then it's ready to go. And one thing that totally changed the game for me with weaving was learning that I could freeze soaked willow. So when you freeze it, it just holds the water inside of your willow. And what that meant for me was that I could prepare a lot of willow and have it ready to go whenever I had time to weave. Okay, now I wanna talk about where I learned to weave. So my number one advice for people looking to get into weaving is to take an in-person class. Before I took an in-person class, I did try to take an online class and I found it very frustrating. Um, also probably my willow wasn't so properly soaked, so that probably added to my frustration, but having someone there to show you hand positioning, size of willow is really important when weaving. So getting that hands-on experience, I mean, you're learning a hands-on skill. So taking a hands-on class, I think is really key. I'll have the classes that I learned from linked in my blog post. Now a way to find a local class near to you, similar to how you can find a local grower, is through um, guilds. So I've joined three guilds. I've joined the Northwest Basket Weavers Guild, the San Juan Basket Weavers Guild, and the Salt Spring Weavers Guild. Um, all of them have very low yearly um, membership fees and it's a great way to find local classes. Now, when I know I have a class coming up, I'll make sure that I have Willow prepared so that the day after my class, I can repeat what I did in the class to make sure it really sinks in. Now, I still do use online classes. I find that it's really helpful if I'm wanting to remember how to do something or learn a new way to do a handle or um, the rim. So I will link some of my favorite online classes, um, free and paid, in my blog post as well. Now, even though I have an affinity towards weaving with willow, I will also take classes with other materials such as reeds and grasses. It's a very different weaving experience, but I still find that I learn so much about weaving and that I can apply those skills to willow. All right, so now we'll talk about the tools that you need to make a basket, a willow basket. First being uh, a pair of secateurs. Any will do. These are my absolute favorite, the ARS 310. They are Japanese secateurs. I order them on Amazon and they're so sharp. They're really small and they have this um, curved tip so that you can really get in close. Love these. The next two I had made at a local forge. They are a bit harder to find online, I found, at least in Canada. Um, so this one is an awl or a bodkin, has a tapered point, um, and it's for getting in like those tight places when you're making a basket, super essential. This one I lived without for a long time, but I really do like having it. And it's a wrapping iron. It makes your basket really tight. You can be pretty rough and just whack down your willow. So I would totally recommend asking your local forge to make them. Um, basket makers before me went to these forges and explained to them how to make them. And they're just such beautiful tools. The last thing is, um, this is EPDM, but any piece of like rubbery material will work. This is to tie up your uprights so that they don't move around. I used to use string, but it would always come undone and it was so frustrating, but this just holds everything so nicely in place. People will also use those strings that they tie around your arm when you're giving blood or pieces of rubber from um, old bike tires at bike shops. Really anything works, anything that's stretchy and rubbery. 
So yeah, it's pretty simple what you need um, to weave a willow basket. One of my favorite parts about weaving with willow is how it forces me to slow down. The process of soaking willow, waiting for it to be ready, mellowing the willow, and then weaving. It does take a long time, about three to four hours per basket. And I just love that because it feels like the antidote to our culture where everything is so fast and so immediate. Let alone the process of growing willow, harvesting it, drying it, which I'm really excited to do in the future. But my closing tips would be to embrace that slowness, embrace patience, trial and error, and to weave a lot of baskets and give them to your friends for every single occasion. Thanks so much for watching.